Hello everyone, thanks for clicking this video. Um, I'm Oliver Bernard and as of today I will present you our paper at Asia Crip 2020 jointly with um, Adeline Roulanglois which is called Twisted PHS um, using the product formula to solve approximate SVP in ideal lattices. So this is the outline of the talk. Uh, first I'm going to present to you uh, a long series of work that led to our results. Um, second, I will introduce the core idea of our new twisted um, algorithm that uses the product formula. And finally, I will show you some experimental results that um, show big improvements of our existing crypt analysis. So what is a lattice? Um, this is a discrete subgroup of R to the N, uh, for which you can see an example here in dimension 2. Um, as announced in the title, uh, we are going to be interested in the shortest vector problem. And you can see that if I give you um, the orange basis, which is a good basis, um, this should be easy to output the shortest element. But if I give you um, a more random or generic basis, like um, the purple one, then it will be harder for you to, to determine which combinations of vector uh, you should use to, to construct the shortest element. And actually, this is a hard problem, both quantumly and classically. Um, you can also consider structured variance when uh, your uh, lattice is not anymore any lattice, but it's restricted to a subclass of lattices like uh, ideals in number fields. Of course, when you have hard problems, it's always tempting to, to use them for cryptography. And indeed, uh, there were numerous lattice-based crypto systems submitted to the NIST competition. And you have nice security proofs for these crypto systems. And for example, you have worst case to average case rejections that show that uh, the underlying uh, problem uh, like Ring LWE is at least as hard as ideal SVP. So therefore, a natural question is to ask uh, whether ideal SVP is a hard problem or not, despite of this uh, additional algebraic structure. The first shadow came from algorithmic number theory when people found a quantum polynomial time algorithm to compute the class groups or unit groups. Uh, whereas classically, for example, for cyclotomic fields of degree n, this should take a 2 to the square root of n. So this gave rise to a long series of work, starting from a note of uh, Campbell, Grover and Shepard in 2014, where they claim that finding a short generator is easy in cyclotomic fields. And it was proven theoretically um, two years later by Kramer, Dukas, Packard, and Rogev, where they also proved that generically this does not solve uh, ideal SVP because uh, basically uh, a shortest generator is not necessarily uh, a shortest element of the ideal. Then they extended, it was extended to all ideals thanks to the Stickelberger lattice. And experiments were conducted on these algorithms to show that um, they should beat um, BKZ300, but only for a uh, number of fields of degree uh, higher than 24,000. Lastly, <coughs> uh, Pelle, Marie, Aro, and Stele in 2019 uh, extended um, these results to all fields but uh, you had to pay a pre-computation in 2002 to the n. So what is shown on the graph uh, on the right is that if you are ready to pay uh, the 2 to the n pre-computation, then with a quantum com computer, you can in polynomial time uh, solve ideal SVP in any field for an approximation factor of uh, 2 to the square root of n. So you should beat here um, Schnorr's hierarchy. And our work is mainly based on uh, PHS-19. In our work, we propose a twisted version of the PHS algorithm, and um, we, we formalized um, the, the use of the logest unit lattice, and we proposed a new description using the product formula. And this basically um, comes down to adding weights, log norm p, uh, to, to valuations at finite places. And this is quantifying the fact that uh, when you use uh, S units, uh, which uh, which involves big prime, uh, big norm prime ideals, 
this costs you more in the approximation factor than uh, when you are use, using a S unit that involves uh, smaller ID holes. So unfortunately, we didn't prove that um, this should perform better than the original PHS algorithm, but we did prove that this is at least as good as PHS uh, under the same heuristics. So, so far so good. But uh, <coughs> the, the most interesting thing is that uh, experimentally, we obtained what uh, seems to be very orthogonal lattices and uh, th this in turn uh, gave us uh, very tiny approximation factors. So what you can see here in the, in the, in the graph is that uh, the, the orange curve corresponds to twisted PHS and uh, the approximation factor grows very, very slowly with the degree. And in degree 52, we are nearly uh, all, we are uh, just um, at 1.8. And the blue curve, this is uh, featuring the um, PHS approximation factor. And you can see that uh, at degree 52, we are already at uh, an approximation, approximation factor of 10 to the 11. So what are the um, potential impacts on approximate as the ideal SVP of our work? So um, since um, this is almost Christmas, I made a little Christmas list, but let's emphasize that um, there is no theoretical impact of our work on the harness of approximate ideal SVP. But our experiments uh, suggest two things. Um, the first one is that uh, log S unit lattice is uh, very orthogonal. And um, the fact is that um, um, the most costly part of the, of the pre-computation in PHS algorithm is spent on computing a CVP oracle inside that lattice. <coughs> so if we could confirm that it is uh, really orthogonal, even for higher dim dimensions, that would mean that um, the exponential part in the, of the pre-computation uh, in the quantum world uh, would disappear. And the second, uh, the second uh, thing that our experiments suggest is um, that uh, the approximation factors um, is growing very slowly with the degree. And if we could extend experiments to higher degree number fields, we could derive a more general uh, law uh, for the approximation factors and that could reveal sub-exponential in the degree. So now I'm going to introduce the core idea of our twisted uh, algorithm. So first I will uh, recall uh, how um, in the folklore we were using uh, units of number fields to reduce uh, principal ideal generators. And I will show the consequences uh, for our specific problem. And then I will uh, show how this relates to using S units to reduce the output of the class group discrete logarithm problem. And finally, we will use the product formula to generalize uh, smoothly um, the first one into the second one. So um, <clears throat> first, we, we will need to introduce uh, the log unit lattice. So let k be a number field of degree n. So this is finite extension of the rational field. And uh, like in the plat platonic cave, um, k is uh, best known by its uh, images into the complex numbers. So this is just to introduce the sigma notation, which denotes uh, some embeddings, embedding of k into the complex numbers. And an algebraic unit is an algebraic integer u in k, showed that it has a norm one. And what does that mean? It means that uh, the product of the val absolute value of all its images is one. And uh, since this is a lattice presentation, uh, we don't like products very much. So one way to transform products into sums is to take the logarithmic, the logarithm. And so I will introduce uh, the logarithmic embedding, <coughs> which is uh, sending uh, any element of the number field to uh, the vector composed of um, the logarithm of all its images by uh, by sigma so you have a vector with component uh, log of uh, absolute value of sigma to alpha for all sigma and you can see from this formula 
that um, <clears throat> you have a nice uh, characterization of uh, unit. So u is a unit. This is equivalent to ask that uh, logarithmic embedding of u is orthogonal to 1. That means that the sum of all its components is 0. And you can see that it fits uh, from the above formula because the product, the log of the product will be 0 because the norm is 1. And their images of uh, the images of all units, um, they form a lattice, which is called the log unit lattice inside the, the image space. Um, so this is lattice, which is orthogonal to 1. And you can draw it. <coughs> so um, units are, so this is a, um, this is an image in dimension two, but uh, you, you should see the vector one as a, a line, and the orthogonal space to one is, a dim is of dimension n minus one, um, let's say. <coughs> and so, <coughs> how, how do we use it? Why is it important to, to reduce uh, generators? So let's suppose you have a principal ideal challenge, and I have already um, solved the principal ideal problem, so it's given as its generator. So I, I know a G0 which generates B. <coughs> and uh, I can look at the logarithmic embedding of uh, G0, so I, I end up some, somewhere in that space. And um, fortunately, all the solutions to the principal ideal problem are on that line. There are translation of this uh, generator G0 by some units. Um, so I drew, uh, I drew all the, um, the solutions here. <coughs> so how do we find the shortest solution? Um, the answer is quite, um, quite uh, easy. Um, we first project uh, the logarithmic embedding of G0 into the log unit lattice uh, span. We try to find the closest uh, point of this lattice, closest point to the projection, and hopefully we find the red dot here, which corresponds to some unit U. And we use um, the, this unit to reduce um, the generator G0 into G0 over U. And uh, what happened in the six cyclotomic case? Uh, two things. So first, we know a very good basis of uh, of the log unit, log unit lattice, so we can solve CVP efficiently inside that lattice. And um, <coughs> so this gives you a quantum polynomial time algorithm. But um, generically, you cannot expect to to obtain a, a better approximation factor than uh, two to the square root of n because uh, the, the distance, the average distance between two points in the log unit lattice is a uh, square root of n. So how do we extend this? Uh, you could try to relax the constraint on the ideal B, which will not be asked to be principal anymore, but um, to be principal up to some product of finite prime ideals. Um, so you will choose a factor base of prime ideals, P1 to Pk, and the class group discrete logarithm problem is really a generalization of the principal ideal problem when you ask for for some alpha such that the ideal generated by alpha is b times some product of prime ideals of in the factor base <clears throat> and you will define s units with respect to this factor base um, as elements such that uh, s the ideal generated by s is uh, your algebraic integer um, ring times uh, ideals in the factor base. And so the idea is uh, then to use uh, to use this S units to reduce your, your output of the class group discrete logarithm. And uh, in PHS, in the PHS uh, algorithm, they suggest to use um, this function. Uh, so you can recognize in the first part uh, the logarithmic embedding of alpha. And then on the second part, you have uh, some integer uh, finite valuation uh, minus VP of alpha for ideals in the factor base. And um, the problem of this, uh, of this function is uh, it, it's, um, that it gives you a non-homogeneous uh, description of your problem. So you will end up to, to try to solve um, a closest vector problem 
for uh, on one part you will have uh, integers and on the other part you will have a seemingly unrelated value uh, which has a absolute value of complex numbers. So how do we circumvent this? Um, so let's talk about the product formula. This is valid for all elements of the, of the number field. And so one is equal to the product of um, all absolute value of um, embeddings of k into c and times a product of finite valuation um, norm p to the minus vp of alpha. And this is very natural um, uh, generalization in the innocuous looking uh, formula in, in the rational fields that says that uh, the absolute value of 12 is uh, the inverse of um, <coughs> its two idic valuation to 2 to the minus 2 times uh, this, its uh, three idic, idic valuations, which is one third. And um, <coughs> being an S unit means basically that uh, when you restrict um, the green product here to um, a final set, um, the product formula still holds. So <coughs> S is a S unit with respect to the factor base if and only if the product formula still holds exactly on FB on the factor base. And um, this is really a generalization of the unit definition because uh, you could see um, a, a unit as being a S unit for an, for an empty factor base. And so like before, since we don't really like products, you could, um, we, could we can define a S logarithmic embedding which look like that. So we can, you can once again uh, recognize the, the logarithmic embeddings um, on the on the left, and then on the right. The essential difference with the previous uh, map is that we have a log norm p weights on the finite valuations. And so with this new representation, which we, which we call twisted, um, you have a very nice characterization of uh, being a S unit. And you will be S unit if and only if your uh, S logarithmic embedding is orthogonal to one, meaning that um, all the components of these vectors um, sum to zero. <coughs> and uh, as before, uh, the images of all S units form the log S unit lattice, and this is an orthogonal to, to the all one vector. And um, you should note that. Um, the ambient vector space is of higher dimension. So with this formalism, uh, everything goes really the same as for units. And you can draw as before um, the log s unit lattice. And this is a, a stylistic version of the log s unit lattice because uh, you should expect some symmetry around zero. But since I don't have um, many dimensions on my slide, uh, I just took the liberty to remove some points. And uh, as before, let's be uh, any any ideal challenge. And uh, we will consider that uh, the class group discrete logarithm has been solved so that we can write um, that alpha zero is generating an ideal, which is b times some multiple of <coughs> of uh, prime factor base ideals and i could i can use um, my s logarithmic embedding to to map alpha zero inside my uh, s logarithmic space and uh, the, um, <coughs> the good news is that as before all solutions to the class group discrete logarithm are a translation of this alpha zero by some S unit. So I can again uh, draw all the solutions uh, into the line. And um, <coughs> how to find the shortest one? It works exactly the same as for units. So you first project um, the, your S logarithmic embedding of alpha zero into the log S unit space. And um, you should note that this is possible only because we, we we put some weights on finite valuations so that the uh, sum of uh, S units uh, vectors is to zero and the projection goes nicely because otherwise you, this won't work. Hopefully when you solve the closed vector problem into your um, log S unit lattice, you will find um, the right points and you can do some, which correspond to some S units S and you can use this S to reduce 
alpha 0 and I will put alpha 0 over s. <coughs> so you expect to have a better solution because uh, of the weights that are um, that are saying that uh, involving big ideals will cost more. So you expect a better uh, estimate combination and at the end you, you expect to have a better value. And um, one of the technicality I didn't show on this slide is that you must guarantee that the valuation of uh, your solution is, um, is greater than zero on every finite place because otherwise um, the element wouldn't be in B so you have to drift uh, your projection uh, slightly into in the orthogonal space of uh, to one, and uh, we use the dichotomic strategy for to doing that. So now I'm going to to present to you uh, some experimental results on the log s unit lattice geometry and uh, on the ideal SVP approximation factor that we reached. And um, about uh, the quality of the basis, uh, it's always tricky to evaluate the quality of a basis. Um, usually you want a basis to be as short and as orthogonal as possible. So we use several criteria to quantify this short and orthogonal. Um, the first one is a well-known root hermit factor, but um, that mostly depends on the, on the first vector. And so it's useful to, to, to quantify your performance in S, SVP-like problems. The second one is the orthogonality defect, a normalized orthogonality defect, um, which is useful to consider CVP-like problems because it, um, it depends on all vector bases, uh, of all vectors of the basis. Um, we also try to measure vector basis angles, but this this uh, gave a kind of random results and because uh, at, because probably the distribution of the vector basis singles will need to be uh, a little more a little more monitorized than just taking the minimum of av or average <coughs> and the, the last one was to plot a uh, gram schmidt log norms and in in all cases we observed uh, between twisted phs and phs we observed better absolute values in the twisted case and we also observed uh, which is also interesting interesting uh, a much smaller gap before and after um, some big reduction so these two graphs um, are showing uh, gram schmidt log norms and you you can observe first that um, in the twisted case on the left um, the, the, the graphic lock norm curve is very flat um, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's decreasing um, in, on the right in the PHS case and uh, you can also see that uh, the, the dotted curve is um, before reduction and the plane curve is after reduction and you can see that in the twisted case uh, both curves are almost superposed where um, when they are uh, really different in the in the original PHS case, and this is really two comparisons that use uh, the same algebraic material, the same S units, the same factor base, everything is the same. The only difference between the two is um, that we have weights in the twisted case and we don't have weights in the original PHS. Um, also, a remark that is not showing neither in the article or in the graph is that the PKZ taming uh, are very different because in the twisted case um, the graph is output in about 10 seconds, while uh, in the non-twisted case it took um, over a few times 10 minutes. So this suggests that we, we could just use some naive CVP oracle in the twisted case. And finally, we implemented, um, <coughs> this is uh, the, the most uh, indisputable argument. We, we implemented the, the algorithm from end to end, and we measured the obtained approximation factors at the, at the, at the output. And you can show that uh, the, the twisted PHS approximation factor is growing, is growing extremely slowly with the degree, while um, it's exploding uh, in the PHS case to up to 10 to the 11 in uh, degree 52. So to conclude about ongoing work, um, 
Uh, first item would be to theoretically prove that um, the twisted log unit lattice is orthogonal, at least for cyclotomic fields, and uh, to obtain also tighter bounds on the twisted PHS approximation factor to match um, the experiments and the intuition. Um, the second item would be to extend the experiments to confirm that uh, all the phenomenon that we, we did show uh, <coughs> are still valid um, for higher degree number fields when uh, s unit computations are easier. So first target would be multi-quadratic or multi-cubic fields and the second target would be cyclotomic fields but this need um, to, to use something related to the Stickelberger lattice which is not trivial. Um, the third, third item would be to apply similar homogenization ideas to LLL algorithm for module lattices, um, which was published in Asia Crypt last year. So um, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to write us an email uh, at the addresses that are given on the first slide.